woe to me, for I am undone. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. The holiness of God next on So What? <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Storman, and welcome back to So What? Continuing our study on the attributes of God today, I want to look at the holiness of God. You're probably very familiar with that passage out of Isaiah when he has a vision of God and is overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed in the words of a prophet. Woe is, is a word of condemnation, of judgment. And he says, I am undone. I, I'm falling apart at the seams. I'm a sinful man and I live amongst a sinful people and I have seen God. Woe is me. Exodus chapter 3. Moses is looking at a bush. There's a flame in the bush. It's burning, but the bush is not burning up. There's just a flame in the bush, and he's looking at it. He's curious, and all of a sudden, God speaks to him from the bush, and he can no longer look at the bush. The scriptures say he turned his face away. He hid his face from God because he feared God. In the book of Daniel, he has a couple of really, really powerful visions. Some say they are visions of the pre-incarnate Christ. Others say they cannot be. Whatever they are, he says that all the blood left his face. He was pale. He was weak. He fell down. He lost all of his strength. It was completely left him. When Jesus speaks to Paul on the road to Damascus, what does he do? He falls on his knees. What will you have me do, Lord? When the Apostle John sees a vision of the risen Christ in the book of Revelation, it says he fell on his face as though dead. What is this? What is this uniform experience? It is an encounter with the holy. What does that mean? Now, the scriptures talk an awful lot about the holiness of God. In fact, there are, are over 80 specific scripture references to the holiness of God. So it matters. In fact, the word holy is used as a synonym for God. So instead of saying the God of Israel, many times the scriptures say the Holy One of Israel. Okay? Not the loving one of Israel, not the wise one of Israel, but the Holy One of Israel. So it's important to God. Now you may be thinking that holiness speaks primarily of God's moral purity that he is absolutely sinless, that he is light, and in him there's no darkness at all, that he is not evil, that he tempts no one with evil, and that would be true. But my friends, that is not all holiness means. Holiness, the word actually um, refers to the otherness, the uniqueness of God. Really, that God is completely other from us. He is transcendent. His being is highly exalted and lifted up. Have you seen those references in scripture? You might think those are talking about distance, a spatial relationship like God is somewhere far off and distant and it may feel that way, but that is not what the scriptures mean. When the scriptures say he is high, he exalts, he is exalted above the heavens. They are talking about the nature of his being. God's being is so superior to ours. And then when we are confronted by something that foreign, that completely other, it is so strange, it leaves us in fear. In Mark chapter 4, the disciples are in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. You know the story. The storm comes up. They're scared. They're, they're convinced they're going to die. What's Jesus doing? He's, he's sitting in the corner panicking, right? No, of course not. Of course not. He's asleep. And so in a panic, Jesus, wake up. Don't you care if we die? In other words, they're criticizing him for sleeping at a moment of, of grave peril. And what does Jesus do? You know what he does. And after he calms the wind and the waves, the scriptures say, and the apostles were terrified. In fact, they were more frightened by Jesus calming the wind and the waves than they were of the th threat of death. 
and they cry out, what manner of man is this? In other words, what kind of person is this? It's so completely foreign to us, they couldn't, they didn't know what to think. My friends, that is holiness. God's absolute purity and the transcendent nature of his being. R.C. Sproul calls it a transcendent purity. Okay, so what? Who cares? My friends, do you think, was Moses ever the same after that encounter with God? No, no. Was Isaiah? Isaiah's encounter, of course, was at the beginning of his prophetical ministry. What happened after that? He went on to be a mighty prophet of God. We know that Daniel, again, was a mighty man of God, a mighty prophet of God. That encounter with him. We know about the apostles, we know about their lives. That encounter with the holy transformed them forever. Has it transformed you? Have you been transformed by the holiness of God? In 1 Peter, he says that in light of God's holiness, that we should live our lives in reverential fear. The Proverbs tell us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. My friends, do you fear the Lord? And you know what that means, right? It's not like, oh my gosh, fear. There's no fear in love, First John tells us. And Paul tells us there's no, we face no condemnation. We have no reason to fear judgment. Fear in this context is talking about respect, honor, reverence for your God. Do you lack wisdom? Do you lack reverence? For your God. Do you revere him? Do you? When you contemplate the holy, do you think of him as high and lifted up and worthy of your praise? J.I. Packer in his book Knowing God talks about the fact that so much emphasis is placed on the fact that God is personal, that our relationship with him is personal, and that is so true, and that is so encouraging. But as we, as we think about a personal relationship with God, something we've talked about in this podcast is that we tend to dumb God down to our level. And so in these podcasts talking about the attributes of God, I am trying to exalt him in your thinking, that your thinking would line up to the revelation of Scripture, that you would see God as high and lifted up and mighty and worthy of your praise, worthy of your obedience, worthy of your worship. Yes, your relationship with God is personal, but he is not like you and me. He is completely other. What we have seen of his character, his love is ever true. It is not fickle. It does not change, right? God is eternal. God is infinite. God is self-sufficient. He doesn't love you because he needs you. He loves you because it pleases him to do so. He is not like us at all. My friends, contemplate the holy. Worship your God. Worship this God. The Holy One. The Holy One. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll talk to you next week.